In today's video, we're gonna answer the question, which is, should you buy the base model M4 iMac? Is it really worth it over the Mac Mini? Well, what we have here is almost base model. It is the base model spec, eight core GPU, eight core CPU, except it has 512 gigabytes of storage. Now this machine isn't for me, it's actually for one of my neighbours uh, slash somebody that I've been doing their tech support and computer stuff for several years now. And they've had a 21 inch uh, 2013 iMac, which we've used open core to extend the life of, um, and it's just at the point where it is time to be replaced. So he decided to go for this base model M4 iMac with a slight storage upgrade, and it's also got the ethernet adapter power supply thing. So I'm curious to see how that's gonna work and what it looks like. Now, to see if the eight core CPU and eight core GPU is actually holding this machine back, we're gonna put it up against my M4 Mac Mini. That has the standard 10 core CPU, GPU configuration, and it has 24 gigabytes of RAM and five 12 gigabytes of storage. But I don't really think the RAM or the storage should really come into it that much. It's mainly gonna be that CPU and GPU horsepower. All right, well, let's tear into this thing. It's got this little uh, standard Apple kind of sticky bit, which they've had on their machines for a while now, and that keeps it closed. Not as satisfying as the old plastic peels, but uh, yeah, I get it. They're saving the environment and all that. All right, here we go. Let's open up this box and see what's inside. And does it kind of come to the side slightly and down like, ooh. Ooh, very fancy bit of packaging, that. Okay, so let's lift this machine. Wow, we this is light. Wow, compared to the older aluminium IMAX, this, this is very light. I must say, I did think it was light when I was carrying this box into the building. And next here, we have keyboard, mouse, power supply, and general accessories. So what do we get in this thing? Uh, let's start off with the color matched magic mouse, which is nice. Ooh, so this is one of those USB-C <laughs> rechargeable ones where <laughs> the charging port is on the bottom of the mouse. <sighs> Apple, why are you the way you are? And then we've got one of the newer keyboards. Actually, I don't know how long this keyboard has been out for now. I really can't remember, uh, but it is a rechargeable one as well. Do the peel on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. I mean, I don't mind the Apple keyboards personally. It just feels like a standard Apple keyboard that's been there for a while. Uh, no touch ID on this one, obviously. Uh, that wasn't really required. It does, it feels light, but it doesn't feel flimsy though. That's, that's something uh, about it. A lot of lighter stuff can be sometimes correlated with cheap and flimsy and nasty, but no, that's, that's not got any real flex in that. That's a, that's a nice little thing. So we've got a charging cable with it as well, which I assume is the keyboard and mouse, and that's one of those uh, kind of fabric-y style color matched uh, ones, which is quite nice actually. I like the feel of that. Uh, I assume this will just be USB-C with only 2.0 uh, speeds like they did with the iPhones. But even so, it feels nice. And then we've got a standard Apple power cable, I assume. Yeah, standard Apple power cable, not braided anything like that, just that white kind of rubbery, plasticky coating thing that they've had for a while. And then we've got the power supply, and okay, that has a bit of heft to it. Uh, not as heavy as I'd expect, actually, but still a bit beefy. Do the peel pull on that, and you can see that it's got the Ethernet port there, and it's got the, uh, the Mickey Mouse plug, as I like to call it. Now, how does this work? Now, looking at this, I'm guessing the way it transferred data down is um, for these little pins you can see in here, uh, it, it's all kind of way around the inside of the actual barrel jack there, and I'm guessing that is what makes the connection for the data, but there's also, I don't know if this is keyed and can only go in a specific way as well. I'm assuming that it's doing the voltage uh, through this center pin here for the positive and perhaps this outer shield here for the negative of it. I mean, I wonder what it actually outputs. You probably can't really see it here, but according to the power supply, uh, this outputs 15.9 volts and at nine amps. Okay, let's do the main peel. And the main peel starts at the back with these two little tabs and you... Ooh, one at a time perhaps. These are stuck on quite strong. And then I guess it just, let's turn it around for this. Just slides off the top and reveals a big hello. Let's get this mic close to the peel. 
Oh, this is making no noise. That was not satisfying. The machine itself looks quite pretty, I must say. Do miss having a big old Apple logo there, though. I, I, it, I don't know why. It's something I always quite liked about the older iMacs. Do you know what? Looking at this, this is so funny. This kind of... This almost looks more like a display than an actual computer. It's just amazing with the, uh, you know, the Apple Silicon chips, what they can do with actually fitting components inside them. And I'm, I don't know if this is fanless or not. I don't know if it has to have a fan because this whole body is probably a huge, massive heatsink in itself. Right, I think we're going to answer the question as to if this is keyed or not. And uh, I don't know if it is. It, I think it is, yeah, it is keyed because it doesn't want to actually spin in the connector or anything like that here. So that's fair enough. Let's plug in the power. Also, if we do a little tour at the back of the machine, you can see port-wise, that's, that's literally it. This is a two USB-C model. Um, <laughs> I think they're Thunderbolt as well. That's all you're getting, nothing else. Just the power button and obviously the connection for the power and the network pass-through. Okay, let's turn this thing on. Ooh, there's actually a lot more bass in the sound of that than I expected there to be. Turn the power onto the mouse. I'm assuming it'll have some charge. And the keyboard as well. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice screen. Oh, that's a really nice screen, that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the setup, and then I'm going to come back to you, and we'll have a little look and play with the machine. Well, I've got a few things set up now on the iMac, and one of the first things I want to talk about is the display itself. Now, the display itself is a 23.5-inch IPS panel with a native resolution of 4480 by 2520, and uh, just a general LED backlit. I don't think it's mini LED or anything like that. What I want to do was just run some screen uniformity tests. So I'm on testmyscreen.com and we're just going to look at the uh, the colour on it. Now, I don't know how it's showing up on camera, uh, but in person, the colours are actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it looks like there's some kind of more dirty screen on the camera than it actually is. Uh, overall, the colours are pretty good. You've got a little bit of uh, backlight bleed perhaps around the edges in places. But overall, I'd say that's a pretty good panel, especially when you're viewing it dead on. I mean, I can see here on the camera, it looks like it's a bit brighter than it actually is in these corners. Uh, but when you are dead onto it, that's not really an effect you notice. As you know, it's not an OLED and it's not going to be perfect. But for what I can see in front of me, yeah, that's a nice screen. That's a nice display. OK, let's talk about the speakers on this machine. Now, they're not too bad, to be honest. I'm actually quite impressed with them, considering the size of the machine itself. You know, yet again, look how thin this thing is. They couldn't even put a headphone jack in it. It's that thin. And yet they've managed to include some drivers that do actually make a decent amount of noise. There's better low end than I expected out of it, uh, though it's it's not room filling sound. The sound is more than good enough, in my opinion, for video calls and general audio listening and perhaps just, you know, watching movies at your desk or something like that. But if you know had it further away, it's, it's not really loud enough, in my opinion, to fill the room. But it is much better than laptop speakers. And I think most people would generally be happy with it. I've got my Rode Wireless Go mic on and I'm standing pretty much next to the uh, camera on my phone. So we'll just play a bit of audio and see how it sounds from this distance. <laughs> Obviously, you're never going to get a true representation over what is essentially a kind of mid-range lav mic on my phone, then onto my computer, and then onto your computer or device through the means of YouTube where the audio and everything is compressed. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things. If you can get to a store and try it and listen to it, that's always a fun way. But I think for most people, this will be fine. And hey, you can always put a USB DAC on this and just get your own speakers and go about it that way if you really need to. And let's talk about the webcam and the inbuilt mic quickly. What you're hearing now is the audio from the inbuilt microphone 
and what you are seeing is the video from the webcam. Now this is a 1080p webcam, finally. I can't remember if they were 1080p on the M1 machines, uh, but they certainly are on the M4 anyway. And it is a drastic improvement over some of the webcams that have previously been shipped on Mac devices. So that will mean it's kind of nice for any video calls or any just kind of, I suppose, YouTube blogging and things like that. Okay, so it's time to move on to the benchmarks. I'll be putting the iMac up against my 10-core CPU and 10-core GPU M4 Mac Mini, as I mentioned earlier. Now let's start with the Cinebench results. The iMac in the multi-core test scored 702 points, where the Mac Mini scored 954, which means the Mac Mini is 35.8.9% faster, which I must say is not insignificant. The single-core scores are as follows. The iMac got 172 points, and the Mini got 178 points, which is a 3.4% difference, which can really be chalked up to a margin of error in my opinion. And besides, all the cores share the same clock speed anyway, so this is not a surprising result. GPU-wise in Cinebench, the iMac scored 3,639 points, and the Mac Mini scored 4,412 points, which is a percentage increase of 21.24% for the Mac Mini which is more in line with what people would expect to see with the removal of just two cores and shows in some scenarios, well, just how well Apple Silicon scales when it comes to the amount of cores a machine has. Now moving on to Geekbench, we see some interesting results which show the iMac with a multi-core score of 13,962 and the Mac Mini with a score of 14,701, which is only a percentage increase of 5.29%, which is a much closer result than I was expecting. This yet again goes to show how different applications and different benchmarks will react, well, very differently to hardware changes. Now the single core Geekbench shows an increase of not even 1% for the Mac Mini, so yet again it's within the margin of error. The Geekbench Metal Graphics Test show the iMac with a score of 48,533 and the Mac Mini with a score of 57,854 which is a 19.20% increase, which is similar to that of the Cinebench graphics test. Now the disk performance benchmarks are a little bit trickier, as neither the iMac or my M4 Mac Mini have the base storage configurations. However, my friend Tom, also known as It's My Natural Color here on YouTube, has access to a 16GB of RAM and 256GB SSD M4 Mac Mini and has sent me over his disk speed test results which show the base model storage at 18,082.9 megabytes per second write and 2,805 megabytes per second read. The iMac with 512 gigabytes of storage gave a result of 3,433.1 megabytes write and a 3,033 megabytes read which is essentially identical to how my 512 gigabyte optioned Mac Mini performed. Now it is worth noting that we're not totally comparing apples to apples, if you'll excuse my obvious pun. The reason being is because my comparison figures are taken from a Mac Mini and not another iMac. Why is that important? Well that is important because there might be slightly different abilities in the cooling system on the Mac Mini to the iMac and also the amount of power the CPU and GPU can draw, though I suspect it's probably not as much as you would think. You'd probably have to worry more if you were comparing a laptop chip to a desktop chip, but I believe they'd probably be working in around the same way if I'm honest. However, I would like to think that the results should be close enough that you could still make an informed decision from the figures that I've given you today. I really would have loved to have been able to run more tests on both of these machines and put them head to head a little bit longer doing other stuff, but I just don't have the time and the iMac does have to go back to its rightful owner. So my advice, as always, is to look around online and see what other people have tested out these machines and maybe look at benchmarks that perhaps suit your particular workflow and work case a bit better than maybe what mine do. Either way, I'd like to think what I've given you today is probably helpful enough for you to make some form of decision. But for me, the real question is, is it worth spending the extra money on the 10-core CPU and 10-core GPU model? Well, as always, that depends. Right now, at the end of January in 2025, the pricing is as follows. The base model iMac is £1,299, and the mid-tier model, which has the 10-core GPU and 10-core CPU, is £1,499. 
Now, it's not just a CPU and GPU increase that you get with that upgrade. You also get Touch ID, you get two more Thunderbolt ports, and you also get the Ethernet adapter that is built into the power supply. So for me, I would say that for most people, even with the performance increase of the 10-core CPU and 10-core GPU model, the base model iMac would still be more than enough. And I really do think that the performance increases would just not be noticeable to the average everyday user. What actually matters quite a lot is single core speed. And as you've seen, that is pretty much identical across both the configurations. And that is because a lot of applications that people use are still quite reliant on single core performance. As I said, this is all just my opinion and what I have learned from many years of playing around with computers and working on them. So to reiterate, Take from this what you will and look around at other reviews online and just see what works best for you. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video on this base model M4 iMac. I have to say it's been fun to play around with. And to be honest, this is a machine that I think would probably suit most people's needs. I'm sure the person that's purchased this that I've been setting up for is going to be very happy with this for many years to come. So until next time, as always, I am Will. This is another random tech video and I'll see you all in the next one. So I'm gonna plug the air fryer back in because my plan is